We are so excited about being here with you. I know I've got this thing on here and um, and we're getting started. We're bringing our Facebook Live on. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Let me pull up. Hey, so glad that you all can make it with us. Good evening. Yeah, so. <laughs> so glad, so glad. And uh, so we, we, we thank God for you. And uh, so glad to be with you. You know, uh, so much has happened. And, and because so much has happened, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, we've had our head down so far mm -hmm. that sometimes we didn't stop and just say, thank you. Right. And so I thought, I thought it would be good if we take a minute tonight just to say thank you for 10 years. And I'm going to tell you all something. When you all find out what we did together, uh, there are so many people that were a part of what we were doing and over the years. And we could not have done it without you. So we're, uh, just shout out to you. We are looking up to you. Yes. We are saying thank you for everything that you've done. Uh, we're bringing a couple more folks on. And you're going, to be, um, you're going to be amazed at what you and I and we have yes. been able to do. <laughs> so much. <laughs> it will blow your mind. And, and one thing is we could not have done it without our family, our friends. Um, we couldn't have done it without you. I, I don't know any other way to say it, you know? And it started Covenant Community Fellowship and there were so many people that came over to that place on Southside yes. and we <laughs> were amazing. so grateful. Yeah. And I know that there are some people that were saying, a, a storefront, I'm not really <laughs> shoot. Right. I, I didn't even know we were in a storefront, <laughs> right? <laughs> But, but, you know, we started uh, over there and God told us just walk among the people because we had a vision and we said, what would it be like if there was a church that was just as much for you as you are for the church? And so that became very important. And, and then we found some folks that were just, you know, they were crazy enough to come over down South side <laughs> with us. Right. right. And, and to began to walk with us. And so we are so grateful uh, for what we have been able to do together over this time, right? And so I, I think that's that's where we are. Uh, we started in the Pickwick Conference Center, mm -hmm. walking among yeah. the folks at Southside, and we had folks, we had left a, a large kind of mega church congregation, and we were walking, and we wanted to learn how to love. And then you had people that began to come over. You had musicians, you had right. singers. Yeah. Thank God for musicians and singers, yes, right? Yes. And so they came over and you had Brother Terrence that was, yes. and who else? A musician while you had Brother Terrence, you had Shane. Shane. Cardinet, yes. you know, um, and- uh, Brother Greg. That's right. Yes. Brother uh -huh. Greg was there. Uh -huh. And what about drums? Who else? Yeah, Greg on drums. Brother Josh. Josh Stanley. Yes. 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 Could yes. not, could yes. not have done it without right all on. of those folks. Right. And then, um, and then I think we even had, even Kiwan helped on drums sometimes. Yes, he did. Yes, right. Daryl on saxophone sometimes. Yes. Right. Yes. And um, then you had brother Nate lead guitar. Yes. Lead guitar. And you know we were a ragtag fugitive fleet. It was amazing. <laughs> right. And then and then we had singers that came. Right. Yes. Uh, Kiwan was there. Uh, we had Linda. Linda was there. Right. Uh, Michelle. And Michelle, Linda, right? Yes. And Miriam. Miriam. And Jasmine. Jasmine yes. Ishman. And, 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 oh, man. Oh, and then man. eventually you had some guys, uh, brother. Tamika. 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 Yes. Yes, it's Tamika sang. So, so yes. she sang too. She did. Um, I, I, you know, I wish I, I shoot, I, I hate that I didn't uh, remember to invite so many of them because we couldn't have done it without Not you guys. All. Not at all. And in 2011, it was a tornado disaster. And, and our church, if you remember, Covenant Community Fellowship, you all let us yes. began an organization called Mission Alabama. Yes. Right. It was during the disaster, yes. during the tornado, yes. right? Yes. And and I re we remember that uh, Sister Jack Jackie Wilson now, right? Yes. Was spoken then Jackie Wilson. Remember her house blows down and, yes. and, yes. and it was a challenging time, but because of what you all allowed us to do as a ministry, we want you to know that 
since that time, 10 years ago, that what you're going to be amazed to learn what we as a covenant community, and thanks to you guys, we could not have done it without you. Uh, we could not have. You had Bethany and her daughter, they came. Yes, Lorena. And Lorena, yes. so many people so many came people through came. to help us out and we appreciated yes. it. And then you had so many people that came and they worked in that. Oh, yes. Because we said we were gonna be a kingdom focused mm -hmm. ministry where families yeah, came so. first, yes. right? And so we said that and, and and we sought out to learn how to live that way. Mm -hmm. And I wanna, I wanna let you know, we were imperfectly perfect. <laughs> that's that's the way that I describe it because, because we, we were not perfect in what we were doing, right. but we had love and we care for one another. And so we thank you for that. So I wanna share with you, we wanna share with you something special that happened whether you were in Five Points uh, West with us or whether you were in um, Central Park when we when we had the kids coming from Central Park oh, wow. over there for Hope yes. Talks and, yes. and all of that, we just say thank you. Thank you so what much. What we're about to share with you and, and then for our families that are out of town in, in Mobile and in Montgomery and Tuscaloosa. And you remember we had the Tuscaloosa families that drove in, right? right? They drove in. And man, that yes. was such a blessing, yes. right? Yes. And so we thank God for our Tuscaloosa families yes. that were driving in and being a part of what we were doing. We wanted to be a part of a church that not only worship, but a church that was also committed to upreach you know worship mm -hmm. outreach downreach growing deeper and then in reach where we'd have our fellowship sundays and the like and i'm going to tell you it was so cool uh, i remember the days we'd go out to the park magnolia park over yes. there and we'd have service outside and you know pastor verdell right yes. i mean he and uh -huh. uh, he and the crew they come up and we had a whole sound system look like oh we were look like we, right <laughs> yeah. right and so it was really great i just just hats off to all of them yes. those ministers that came and were a part uh pastor eddie hall and and and, and pastor verdell stanley and pastor charles davis and yes. and pastor mike kemp yes. and all those folks had come over as we were seeking to build a church where the vision of the church was to, to be, be the, church. the church, right? And so we sought out, but we also wanted to be a church that met the needs of the families right. that, are, that were in our community. And that became very, very important to us. Yes. That, and so because of that, we were able, we've been able to have since that time, because of you, more than a 200 million dollar impact yes. and and that's right thank you for your questions that's right um that's right and so we couldn't have done it without you Not at all. you know people say oh they don't know what they're doing we didn't know what we no. were doing because oh what we wanted <laughs> yeah. we wanted to be a congregation that could have an impact on the community that's right. so we started training chaplains right before yes. we knew we would need them it Absolutely. was before the disaster yes. 20, 2011 tornado disaster yes and then after that, case managers, we train more than anybody. Yes, we And I, we just say thank you. Thank you. I want you to look at just a couple of things right here. Because, and um, we're getting on, let started. Me, let me we're... Get because I want you to see these things because what happened, we were able to do some things because of you. Yes. And, and we could not have done these things except you had been a part of it. And so for that, we just say, thank you. Thank you. We are grateful. Yes, we are. Uh, let's see, I wanna put this up on the screen so you can see it. Um, we, had, we had so many, you know, and the chaplain's core just took off, right? Yes. Right, so, I mean, you were in the chaplaincy and we trained some 30 chaplains, Brother Delvin Ishman was yes. in the chaplaincy and Ch Brother Charles, Pastor Verdell, mm -hmm. and they went on and they took that thing on into uh, the police department and, and throughout the community. And so I just wanna say that that was powerful. We thank God for you, but we wanna show you something on 10 years, right? And this is pretty awesome. I can't wait to show this to you. I'm bringing it up now. So let's see how I do this. 
Here it comes, you all. 10 years. Because of you, this is what we accomplish. Mission Alabama was an organization that we started in the church, Covenant Community Fellowship. Those folks that were from across this area, across central Alabama, you all were the ones that paid the resources, probably tens of thousands of dollars into Mission Alabama getting up and becoming something amazing. And we started it right in 2012. And we were Mission Birmingham for the longest. And then all of a sudden, Mission Birmingham went away. And then we started that Mission Birmingham Transformation Strategies, yes. which became Mission Alabama. Right. And so, and so we are grateful for it. But I want to let you guys see. I want to let you all see. Here's what we've done because of you. Because you, your families, you know, I, I'd love to be able to call all the families, the Harris family, the Halls oh, family, the, so you know, the uh, and, and continuing on into the present, you know, yes. the Thomases and Duckworths and yes. Stanleys oh and, and we could go on and oh on and God. on. And then the families of Brother Jeffrey and the people from Trade Towers, right. right? And Sister the Geraldine. Dailies, Sister Geraldine, yes. so many the of Wilder you all. Family. The Wilder family, the right Jones family, yes. Bimbo. Yes. Bimbo. Yes. And, yes. And, and, and our brother that loves Sister Sweater. Oh, <laughs> right. So we thank we thank yeah. God for our brother. Right. Thank and God it was it. amazing. But here's what we did. Because of a quiet generosity, we, we said, we're going to figure this out. You remember, so a two hundred million dollar impact that started with the tornado disaster. And so we had other churches that came alongside of us. Right. And when so when the mayor said, look, we want this ministry that is birthed out of CCFC, Covenant Community Fellowship Church. We want you all, uh, we want to come alongside and help. And the mayor asked us to take the lead in it. And then we did this Delta Call con concert, right? Yes. An internationally oh, televised yes. concert that we could not have done without not all of all. you all, right? All. Because because you all were, you all were, um, I don't want, what's, what's another word for crazy enough? Because you don't want to say crazy enough, but you guys were <laughs> special enough, right? To follow us and we could not have done it without you. The children were amazing and our, and our kids were young in that time, right? And, and they were young, but the children, they were amazing. You know, uh, Charity was just a baby. She's at Vanderbilt now, right? Right, right. You had Josh and, and you know, I mean, just so many of them uh, that had, the Harris twins and, and I mean, twins and the Harris twins, and, yeah, right, right, right. Right. Two sets of twins and Daniel. And, and there, there, Simone, yeah. there was so many names because of you all, we were able to do this. You all remember in Pratt city, you remember the ready day back to school where we partnered with uh, Brook Hills and, and we adopted every kid in public housing and around that needed help, over 4,500 kids, mm -hmm. shoes, socks, supplies, and belts, and all of that, you know, that's right. And you remember at that concert, we had BB and CC whining. Yes. And, and we couldn't have done that if our, if our church partners like Faith Chapel right. hadn't stepped up. Right. And they, Deborah Blaylock was amazing. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, I know she doesn't take credit for it. It was Pastor Mike. We thank God for yes. Pastor Mike, but Pastor O'Neill and, and everybody just stepped up, you all. Mm -hmm. And we did something. Yes. When our city was hurting together, when we had been ripped apart in central Alabama mm -hmm. and we were buried. You see that picture yeah. right here. They sent their prayer teams, they sent ushers, greeters. We had everything. The body of Christ came together on that day to support what we were doing, what we were doing. And it was amazing. Yes. The ready day one back to schools, shoes, socks, book bags, supplies, and belts yes. were going somewhere. Uh, the mayor's regional leadership dinner, yes. the mayor's prayer breakfast. Yes. We did those things when our city was torn apart. Yes. And then even in the midst of that, we, we were part of bringing to Birmingham, really facilitating mm -hmm. that. We got April Williams to work with us and the superintendent. More than 5,000 kids have dropped back in and gotten their high school diploma. And so we brought the dropout recovery program because yes. Covenant Community Fellowship, you all said yes. And whether you moved on or not, it, it, you know, and you, you've gone out and you've done ministry beyond CCFC, 
you all continue to make an impact. Yes. Your generosity, your giving, yes. we could not have done it without you. And for that, we all these pictures because when we found out that kids can go to school up until the age of 21 and all of these folks began to get diplomas and, and all of that. Right. And then college and career access, we started the Birmingham College Scholarship yes. Fair because we said that Birmingham had brightest, so the brightest students, but yes. didn't have the opportunity. That's right. And then that commercial of mind is a terrible yeah, thing to waste. Yes. Right. Yes. So we were able to do that because of you. And we did, we started that in 2012 and we had two that year. That's the right. First one, it was such a, a hit and a demand till we had a second one in the same year. That's right. And, he, and, and, and they remind us, thank you for the comments, if you see the comments. And then we have the home ownership program going yes. on, too. Mm -hmm. So there were actually families. Uh, we were we were buying homes, renovate, and there were families in our congregation that moved into those homes. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Some mm -hmm. and, and some of them bought those homes, you know. Right. It, yes. And so we were able to be about that. The Glovers were one. And then uh, Marcus and Christy, the Lasters, the yeah. Lasters right? Mm -hmm. And I think Shane had a house as yes. well. And, and so we were able to do some amazing things together. And so we started that. And then the pandemic and tornado relief uh, has began uh, that eat going on even today where we've been responding. And when you all see these numbers, you're gonna be blown away. But again, none of this comes That's right. unless you all had said yes. That's right. I guess I'm saying that to say we're indebted to you. Thank you. Because of what you did, because of what you did, I think during the pandemic, we had over 23, 24 million pounds of food. Mm -hmm over $25 million that we fed families. That's right. I'm not sure very many other congregations would have given the latitude for their pastor to do that much, but you said yes, and we are grateful. And so we responded to tornadoes yes. and, and all of those things. And then not only did we do the college scholarship program in which we've done over $80 million in college scholarships, we salute you guys for that, right? And you're gonna see, we also worked together just a few years ago to start Career Launch Alabama, where our students could get paid internships, yes. working in manufacturing. All of this happened mm -hmm. because you all said yes. Then Five Points West, Chamber of Commerce, how do we help small businesses? Right. And then, so we've done the small businesses and then have spun out the, the uh, Central Alabama Redevelopment Alliance and Western Community Redevelopment Alliance. And now we have a, literally a business accelerator yes. that is helping businesses that grow and employing. And so those things are happening and we're just skimming. You know, we have the Five Points West Community Alliance. Mm -hmm. One of the things we talked about is that the gospel of Jesus Christ should transform a community. Yes. And so the Five Points West Community Alliance took the five points west of I-65, right? And said, let's work together. We wanna to show you just a little bit right here. This is, I wanna let, I wanna know, do you guys know what city this is? This is the, <laughs> we are the Western District of, of Birmingham. We said we didn't need to reimagine. Right. We just needed to let the love of God and the light of God shine on our on our cities. And this is what West Birmingham looks like, you all. This is West Birmingham. As we began to look and think differently, the Western Sports District, where we've got the World Games coming, the Western Education District. You all, these are colleges, three colleges and universities that are west of Birmingham. But then the, the pictures at the bottom are just a few of the high schools that are, that are in our community. And so we have a beautiful community. You know, this is our wellness. We, I mean, this is amazing. We have mental health and so many things west of I-65 and then our parks. This is West <laughs> Birmingham. Hard. Right. This is the West Side, 41 parks, 1900 acres, you all. 
This is West Birmingham, right? This is not the image that we often get, but this is, but this is us. That's right. And we wanted you all to see this. We wanted you to see it because part of reimagining and and thinking through, rethinking through things, it comes from having the capacity to be able to do it, the time to be able to do it. And we wanted to be a church that was able to do that. And you all gave us that opportunity. And for that, we are grateful. So I wanted you all to see that. That was so powerful, so important. But here's the next thing I wanted you all to see. And this is this is pretty amazing. The impact that we have had, right? There, there, there is a, a section on this page that says, I think it's the 10 year anniversary. And I want you all to see the impact. What a great picture, right? <laughs> right. So there's so much more that's there, right? $200 million impact. Yes. Yeah. So Birmingham, uh, uh, from unemployed to $200 million impact, right? So Mission Birmingham kind of said they didn't like the direction we were going. They wanted to pray and wait. We wanted to take the gospel out to the highways and byways across central Alabama. So we did it. And because you said yes, Mission Alabama was born. And so our 10-year impact, right? We started with the disasters, um, Operation Warm. We did that in 2011. Mm-hmm. In 2012, we did Ready Day One and two college scholarship program uh, fairs that year. And then we did the, the dropout recovery program. And you, you can also see right here, uh, as we're going down here, I want you all to notice, I know, slow down. I hear you, Delvin. All right. All right. So here, this is how we, we wound up, even with the food, of having an amazing impact on the community. The numbers are a little higher now, but for the disaster response during the pandemic, these are the dollars that we put into the community, right? Operation Warm, $86,000, $1.8 million in disaster relief, 21, now over $25 million um, uh, that we put in uh, just to uh, just again, during the disaster, I'll just go down. Ready day one, we've put together because you said yes, 860,000. College scholarship, over 82 million. Dropout recovery, $99 million has come back into the community that was not coming in before. Right. The economic impact because you all said yes. Now, this is exciting, and I know we're going fast. Remember Christmas in the city, we began to adopt every child that was in foster care. If you were in DHR's custody and those families needed help, we built partnerships and bridges to make sure. And and who helped make space for them and pack those things and sort them and put the names on it? Covenant Community Fellowship. And so when I say we could not have done it without you. That's right, we could not have. We really couldn't have. It didn't stop in 2019. We started the Five Points West Community Alliance, re-envisioning Five Points West. We then started the Chamber of Commerce, right? Because we knew that there was no Chamber of Commerce in the Western part, which is predominantly African-American. We said, we got to help families, we get, but we also have to help businesses. Mm-hmm. And then, COVID relief, which was amazing, right? Because that's when we started the the hashtag. I care Alabama, yes. Right. And by the time we got through, we were delivering 90 plus percent of the food, at least Mm -hmm. our network was, that was being distributed in Alabama by the government. And, And so you began to look at those numbers 67 county, 21 million pounds of food. This is the impact because you said yes. Now, it gets better. And I want you all to know that, that, it, you know, where do we go from here because you said yes. One of the things that we knew that there were many people that would leave the churches, our churches in the inner city where we live on the west side and other areas. 
and they go to affluent churches outside of our community because they say they wanted to volunteer and they wanted to do things like that. I wanted to let you know, even though we've done over 200 million, what God has in store for us going forward, God is calling us to be a compassionate church, mm -hmm. not just having empathy and sympathy, but that we would go forward. And we learned something with the food when we were distributing food. Much of the food that was in Birmingham that you saw, it came from our network. And we found out that when you gave the church the opportunity to respond, they would do it. They would respond. So I wanna let you all see what we are launching in 2022, because you said yes. Covenant Community Fellowship, we love you guys. I wanna let you know, we, are, we will now have a capacity to be the hands, the arms, oh and so much yes. of what God desires for us to do. Now, we're about to show you something that I believe is gonna be just simply amazing, right? And I wanna put it up here and I want you all to see it. We, we, will, be launch, well, we will be launching a ministry called City Serve Alabama. It is a culmination of so many things that we have done, but now, we're talking about millions of dollars in resources mm -hmm. to where, and it's not just about helping the poor over there or the people over there. It's about making sure that you and I, that our families, that our neighbors are whole, and then we're going abroad. I want you all to see this because I think it's very powerful. And, and um, right, this is City Serve. Alabama. This is what we're launching. And I want you to I want you to hear just a little bit about what we're about right here. God's answer to the suffering in the world is the infrastructure of his church to bring spiritual and physical transformation to its community. We want to mobilize the church to fulfill its purpose. City serve brings practical resources to local churches to help them show love to the hurting, hope to those in despair. From the neighborhoods to the nations. What's so powerful about this is that people won't have to leave their churches. That's right. Whatever church that you are a member of, we can now partner and resource your church, resource your congregation, wherever you are, especially if you are part of Covenant Community Fellowship across the years, with the resources that you need. When we are fully up and running, and, and one of the things we, we did today, we closed on a warehouse. So it's pretty amazing, right? And it was, you talk about warfare, it yes. was warfare. But I wanna show you, we joined with CityServe, and so last year, CityServe, I mean, since CityServe's inception, they're about three years old. In the last three to four years, they've served 405 million meals, provided $813 million in resources to hurting families, mm -hmm. 489, 486 million pounds of food, through over 600 congregations. As we go across the state, we've gone across and we've provided more than 5 million meals. And this is Mission Alabama as we began our City Serve initiative in I Care Alabama. More than 20 million pounds of food, 1.4 million people served, and we haven't even gotten started yet. City Serve is moving across the country. And so we've been given the opportunity to do City Serve Alabama, and then we're starting here in Birmingham. But I want you to see for yourself the opportunities that you are going to have. Yes. Remember, we talked about upreach, worshiping, mm -hmm. downreach, discipleship, growing deeper, inreach, fellowshipping, and then outreaching, right? Outreach, which is going out, going out. right? Mm -hmm. You're about to see 
us building the capacity to do something amazing together. This is what is happening right now because you said yes to us. We feel obligated to come back and report back because it was your service, yes. your giving, your tithes, your offerings, your mm -hmm. pledges that allowed us to get here. Your prayers. Oh my <laughs> God. Don't you see this as, a, as toys? Don't you, don't you see these as tools or, or diapers? These are necessities to people. Something happens when you deliver somebody a couch. You give somebody some blankets. It's God. It's just we're, we're being his hand. You are about to embark on one of the greatest opportunities, something that I believe is God's next movement across the country. We're so excited to announce CityServe Michigan. And really what that is, is it is a collaborative network of churches that have come together that are going to help reach their community. And how that's going to work is CityServe Michigan is going to provide resources that will enable the members, the attenders, those people that are connected with the church to reach out to their friends, their neighbors, their coworkers, even family members that have needs, but also use those items as a way to invite them to church, to pray for them, to open up the door for a relationship with them. Meeting their physical needs, we've been able to partner with them in relationships. And as we partnered with them, I gained equity in those relationships, then they were open to hear the gospel. And they see you coming as those who want to give instead of those who want to receive. People are so much quicker to open their heart and their doors to you for you to have the opportunity to share Jesus. So the model of CityServe Michigan works as a tiered system. There is a hub, there's a pod, and there is a hero. The hub is essentially what CityServe Michigan is, and it's gonna be a large warehouse that will receive donated products that are given, and then they will help distribute those items to the individual churches, which we are calling pods. And then the pods are gonna work with the people who go to that church, and we call them heroes. Really, anyone and everyone can be a hero because you can take those products and bless somebody in the community. Some of our seniors, and one of them in particular is an uh, older couple, and they were in dire need of new furnishings. We showed up, had this brand new couch, two big, very comfortable recliners, and a kitchen table. She just wept with such grateful heart. It was one of our early pods who joined on the city CityServe, and they had taken the, the products and gone right back into the community and began to knock on doors, and they took with them flyers to invite people to church. Well, it just so happened that one of the doors that they knocked on was a man named Max. He's a single father at home with small children. A rent was due. He was expecting the landlord to come and put him out. There's a knock on the door. It was the church bringing uh, items from city, sir. And as the church is sharing, they say, hey, we just want to be a blessing to you uh, and invite you to church. Here's our card. And he said, I actually used the flyer and set my beer on it. Two weeks later, he picks up the flyer and decides that he's going to go to church. He ended up going to church that Sunday and gave his heart to the Lord. He said that he felt like God had a calling on his life. He began to invite all of his family members, all of the, that end up coming to church. Within a month, he and his wife was reconciled. And God began to turn things around in his family. He said that day when the church showed up, it was actually God who knocked on my door. But he used city serve to do it. As believers, we are all called to be a part of the process of making disciples. We're not all pastors. We're not all preachers or teachers, but we've all been called to do our part. I love that it's not just pushing product out to people. We also want to show them the Lord. I wanted to be involved in the neighborhood aspect of going out there and ministering to people in the neighborhood. And it's also a privilege to serve the Lord in this capacity because I can see his heart in it to go out and reach the community. And this is just one way that we can do it. We're all pieces of the puzzle. I may not be someone that's out walking the streets, but I am a piece of that puzzle and I am doing a part. Physical toys, physical needs. It's God spiritually saying, hey, I care. The need doesn't know a demographic. We give it to homeless people, to people that have a car and a house. God has given us an opportunity to, to reach our communities, to be a blessing with no strings attached. And so we encourage them that what we're doing is reaching out into communities to help lead people to Christ. It's just perfect for me, what I 
what I'm meant to do, I guess. <laughs> we have literally seen thousands upon tens of thousands of people come to the Lord Jesus Christ and lives that have been changed through our ministry here at Three City Service. I hope that you all are just as encouraged as we are. This next ministry, you talk about you, that truly the gospel, go you into all the world and make disciples. You know, he tells you, in, begin with Jerusalem and Judea and to Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world. Never before has the body of Christ been as resourced as we are being resourced right now in the middle of a pandemic that we will have the opportunity to show the love of God through gospel deeds of love, justice, and mercy. It's hard to teach a kid that is hungry when they come to school. Yes, that's right. It's hard to have their attention when they are cold and the house that they're going back to is cold. It's hard that when they're sleeping on the floors and in the city of Birmingham, we, uh, and in, in our Western area where we are, where we live, the poverty rate rate is 40%. And so with these next moves and what we are doing, we're not, we're not only talking about mobilizing the whole church to reach the whole city with the whole gospel. We're also talking about providing the resources that you need. So you don't have to leave your congregation where your heart is in underserved communities where you're not bringing in a lot of money and, and that kind of deal in those congregations, you don't have to leave there and go to a mega church somewhere. You, you are able, you will be able to, where you are, respond to the needs. We're grateful for where we are in this season. We couldn't, we couldn't have done it without each of you all and we can't do it without each of you all wherever you are whether you're in oklahoma or scattered across the state of alabama or on the east coast in the carolinas where some of our members are or in florida or in south dakota like robin right, right. or out in cali um like kevin and Sharita, yeah. right? We still stay in touch, you all. Yeah. Or like Jimmy, right? Who is in Houston. Right. We yeah. still stay in touch. We love you guys. Mm -hmm. We care about you. We're indebted to you for all that you've done. The focus of the ministry as we, as, as we go forward is that we would be a compassionate church, right? And, and whatever your area is, imagine this. Imagine as you go that your Jerusalem is your family, your home, right? Your church, that's your Jerusalem. And when you see needs within your congregation, then you will be able to meet those needs. We will be able to meet those needs. And then your Judea is as you go. Yes. So that's where you live, work, and play. That's right. Right? That's right. And how many times you're a disaster case manager, you know the needs that people have that nobody knows that they have. Yes, yes. There's, I discovered that as I was providing uh, case management, disaster case management during the April 11th tornadoes after that, the tornadoes and the ones that happened in 2012. And when I tell you, I realized my heart was broken when I noticed that a lot of families were in a disaster before the natural disaster hit. And just some of the clients that I had broke my heart uh, to find out that we could only get them um, whatever they lost. We couldn't, we couldn't get them beyond that. So there was a family that everyone was sleeping on the floor. They didn't have mattresses and I could not get them mattresses according to the laws with FEMA. So Body of Christ came together and I went to the unmet needs table and, and advocated for that family and they received beds. The children didn't have to sleep on the floor anymore. And, and the mother didn't have to sleep on the floor anymore. 
And um, I had reports of how they're, they improved in school. You know, they, their character was developed even more so, you know, less fights, less, you know, altercations. And who would have thought just providing beds with mattresses and linen and churches came together and they said, okay, we can buy mattresses. We can, and they divvied it up and that family was able to get beds. So just the thought of a city serve coming to be able to be a part of this, yeah. because I've seen the needs that a lot of people won't tell you about. I've seen it up close and personal and it grieved my spirit, it grieved my soul to, to know that people were living like that every day and was expected to, to, to perform and to do well and prosper in life, but they couldn't because of their living situations. So I'm grateful to be able to be a part of this. I'm excited for what we're going to do and, and how many people will be blessed by our efforts. And I'm thankful for you all. Wow. And as you see, in cityservealabama.org is the website. And I want you to know that all of us can be a hero. All of us have superpowers, right? Yes. And, and the way that we access, so we can feed the hungry, we can care for the widows, we can care for the orphans, we can care for the poor, we can care for the addicted, right? The poor are not only without resources, right. the poor are also hurting. Yes. Right? Yes. And 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 the same thing with with those that are with those folks, kids that are that are orphans, those that are in foster care. Mm -hmm. Did you know that 62% of the kids in foster care are moved out, removed out of their home? That's almost a thousand in Birmingham mm -hmm. because of poverty. The homes being under-resourced. Imagine us together having the ability now, because we said yes, because you allowed us to, because you followed us in saying yes, have the ability to make sure that there's beds, that there beds, furniture, appliances, toilets, sinks. Because you said yes, we're going to be able to respond yes, to are. the needs, right? Yes. And so we will be able those families that have foster kids or those grandmothers that are keeping kids, you know, uh, there, there's a family, uh, our partner, our network was working with where the grandmother has, and grandfather have five kids now. Three, because the mother is dealing with addiction. Two, because the father is incarcerated and they can't leave them out on the street. That's right. They need our help. And now for the first time, we will be able to help them as the body of Christ, yes. we will be able to respond to the need. To those of you that work with prisoners, when they leave, they have nothing, many of them coming back, That's right. right? They've been gone away. The world they left has changed. Mm -hmm. Imagine us being able to provide for them um, yes. these packets, just like when you were sent off to college, right? Or and socks and just things that you and I take for granted, That's right. right? All of that is a part of the opportunity that we have. Right. You also, again, I just want to stop. Mm -hmm. I want to say thank you again. Yes. No matter who you are, what part that you yes. play. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of Covenant Community. Because your part matters. It matters right. so much. It matters. You know what? You in we all imperfectly used our superpowers, our gifts, <laughs> talents, and abilities yes. with a perfect God. Mm -hmm. And God used that to make mm -hmm. a difference in people's lives. That's and right. because of our simple obedience, God is now exponentially increasing our capacity yes. to do even more. Yes. And for that, we are excited about Yes. So we, we want, to, again, uh, for those of you, again, that are part of our, our Covenant Community Fellowship Church right now, we are so excited about this. You, we have not seen anything like this before. I'll just tell you that. And, and remember what we're saying, whether you are a part of our congregation 
or not, mm -hmm. wherever you are, we want to empower the church to reach the whole city with the whole gospel, the whole church reaching the, the whole, whole city, city with the whole gospel, right? And that means meeting the felt needs yes. just as much as meeting the heart needs, right? And it's what Christ did. So the whole idea of compassion becomes so very important. As we're preparing to relaunch, we, we've been, we've been COVIDing right? Whatever the word is for, <laughs> for COVIDing, we, we have been COVIDing and, COVID. and right. We don't have, we didn't have COVID. Okay. Right, 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 right. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> we didn't, we didn't, uh, right, right, right. For those of you that need to know, we did not have no. COVID. Okay. <laughs> but we have been really, really watching ourselves. We've been, we've been very um, attentive to making sure that we stayed healthy, yes. that we made good decisions and the like, just like many of just like many of you have. So, so we've done that. And but again, so when we relaunch, there are people that are out there hurting. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when we when we relaunch, we're gonna focus on really, really being a compassionate church. And, and, and again, as you think about a compassionate church, compassion is different than sympathy or empathy, mm -hmm. right? And, and I want to show you this scripture right here. This is so very important. In Isaiah 61, here's what it says. Christ used this scripture over and over as he launched his ministry. And what we, as disciples of Christ, we are to be like him. So in Isaiah 61, he says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. So I've anointed you and set you apart to use your superpowers. What are your superpowers? Your gifts, your talents, and your abilities. What does God require of you? What is your ability to respond? Well, I can't do everything. Again, not asking you to do everything, but what is your ability to respond? Whatever your ability to respond is. Your responsibility. It is your response ability, ability. right? And so what we want to do, we want to empower you to respond yes. according to your <laughs> ability. And Isaiah 61, he says, Spirit of the Lord is upon me, has anointed me to preach good tidings to, unto the poor, the meek, broken, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, right, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy, for mourning, for mourning, the garment of praise, for the spirit of heaviness, so that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old waste, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Right. So God has a plan. Christ, when he started his, his ministry, right after he was tempted in Luke chapter four, he opens verse 18 through 22, he opens up his ministry and he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. This is before he turned the water to wine. This is right after the temptation. He went back to Isaiah. You all, the miracle has happened that we will be able to resource to proclaim the good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Christ was intentional about this right here, living out what he had been anointed to do. 
God wants to make us heroes in the earth. He wants us yes. to be supernatural. Yes. And so he has given us gifts according to his will. Yes. But I don't do this. No, it's what do you do? Yes. What is your ability to respond? I want to share this last verse. John the Baptist, when he was about to be beheaded, He's thinking about his life and that he was called, he was anointed, filled with the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. Anointed to prepare the way of the Christ. Here he is in Luke chapter 7, verse 18 through 23. The disciples of John, they, they reported all that Jesus was doing because what happened, Jesus had just raised the widow's woman's son from the dead. John is now on death row. And I want you all to see this because this is the assignment upon our lives as the church, as the body of Christ, as the ecclesia, the called out ones. John is on death row. He put his mouth on the king. He said it was wrong to have your brother's wife <laughs> and also to sleep with your wife's, your wife's daughter. So he's on death row, but he remembered his purpose. And John did not want to leave this earth without fulfilling his purpose, without using his superpowers, without completing his assignment. Verse 19, he calls two of his disciples together and he says to them, go find Jesus and ask him, are you the one or should we look for another? And when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, Jesus saying, are you the one or should we look for another? I want you to see what happens. Verse 21, acknowledge ESV in the middle here. In that hour, Jesus responded to the need that was along his path mm -hmm. as he went. It is the as you go gospel. God wants us to have the ability to respond to the human need right. that you and I see. That's right. As we go, that is your ability to respond. In verse 21, it says, and in that hour, he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits. And on many who were blind, he bestowed sight and he answered them, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. Make sure to tell him that I'm not just running my mouth. I'm not just jaw jacking. Make sure that you tell him not only what I said, but what you saw. Go tell him what you've seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. There are dead situations that are raised yes. up, dead relationships mm -hmm. raised up, dead things, dormant gifts activated. The poor have good news preach to them, and blessed is the one who is not offended by me. I want to say this, the spirit of the Lord God is up on you still. Yes. Maybe you didn't have the capacity to respond, but God is now giving us that capacity yes. to respond to the needs that are in our community. We have that ability now. And the question becomes, are you the one or should we look for another? You now have the opportunity to be that one. Yes. I want to encourage you to be that one that makes a difference yes. for, real, for change. real change. Jesus is counting on you. And we must also count on him. There's a new day. I want you to listen to this one more time. I want you to pray about how God wants you to be involved in helping a hurting world. God's answer to the suffering in the world is the infrastructure of this church to bring spiritual and physical transformation to its community. We 
want to mobilize the church to fulfill its purpose. City Serve brings practical resources to local churches to help them show love to the hurting, hope to those in despair. From the neighborhoods to the nations. I'll make sure that you get a chance to see this again, okay? So hold on one second as I cue this up one more time, all right? Because this is so important for you to see. I want, I think it's important that you see it. All right, let me see if I can get it for you now, all right? Because we're at, we're at the uh, end of our time, but this is where God is letting me know to end. God's answer to the suffering in the world is the infrastructure of his church to bring spiritual and physical transformation to its community. We want to mobilize the church to fulfill its purpose. City Serve brings practical resources to local churches to help them show love to the hurting, hope to those in despair. From the neighborhoods to the nations. amazing opportunity. I just want to say thanks be unto God. I know we, we are grateful. We are overwhelmed. Today was one of the, the biggest steps. We went through so much warfare yes. to be able to purchase a, a warehouse here yes. for the overflow abundance of resources that are going to be coming to equip you and wherever you are to meet the needs of those that you love so much and care about so much. Nothing sadder or more frustrating than seeing a need and not being able to That's meet right. it. And we want one, uh, we 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 want to equip you to provide the resources through our city serve initiative to make a difference for a real change. So we want to pray. And at this time, we're going to pray for you right now. Trevor, I'm going to ask that you you begin, right? And then I'm going to complete this prayer. And I want you to begin to pray. What would God have you to do? What is your ability to respond? I know. Yeah, I know. You've done your time. All of that. I got it. I got it. You've done your time. But your time is not up yet. And if God is allowing you to be on earth, it is for a reason. So Trevor, if you would. Lead us, you lead us in prayer, and I will close this, okay? Let's compose our hearts as we approach the throne of grace. Oh, most holy God, we come before your throne of grace, thanking you for the privilege, thanking you for the opportunity. Thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Just for being able to approach you. You're the king of kings. You're the Lord of lords. You're the most high God. You're kind, you're loving in all of your ways. And you're bidding us to come to you and share our hearts, come to you and intercede and come to you with a, and offer our supplications. We thank you for inclining your ear to us. Father, I lift up this opportunity that you are giving us, the the body of Christ to reach those who are hurting, those who are in need, to reach the poor that are among us. Father, we know that they are on your mind. We know, Father, that this is the fast that you've chosen for us to help those in need, to provide for those, Father, who are in lack, to comfort those who are mourning. Father, you have mandated us to care for the poor, the hungry, the widows, the orphans, those who are in prison, those who are bound. Father, and we are, we thank you for this tremendous opportunity that you are giving us to make an impression on the kingdom and, and impact others for you. So Father, I pray for everyone that's watching that that's tuned in right now and that will watch this video father i pray that you will touch their hearts and show them show them how you would have them to be a part how you would have them to help 
how what type of hero you want them to be father father and i pray that they will hear you clearly oh god and not only that but but uh obey you swiftly father we thank you for them we thank you for in advance for every person that you are bringing father to help this awesome mission father to to go forth i thank you for them now father and where you're calling them from east west south and north father i thank you lord god that they're coming for. I thank you, Lord, that you're tugging their hearts and you're showing them, Father, a way that they can help, where they could fit in, how they can impact, how they can reach the loss and reach those who are hurting, Father. And, and, and so they can turn their hearts to you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the people that, that have gotten us to this point, Lord God, that, that have helped us and with prayers and and donations and offerings father and so they'll know that they will get a return on their investment that many souls will be reached and many more souls will be saved and people will be cared for so we thank you and we bless you lord god and ask you to just have your way father i ask these things in jesus name yes, lord god. amen God, I agree with every prayer that's been prayed. And you, oh God, who has been faithful. I thank you for faithful men and women who are imperfectly following a perfect God. I thank you for all those that crossed the path to allow us to get here this day. Father, I pray that they would know that they are a part of your plan of success to bless thousands. Yes. Father, we've blessed over a million in the last two years of people across Alabama because of the inputs and the investment of the people that we've worshiped with, that we yes. live life with. I pray that you'd bless them and keep them, Lord God. And we pray this yes. now in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, you all, we love you guys. Thank you so much, Covenant Community Fellowship. Uh, for those that have been a part of us, you're always a part of us. And this ministry is always a part of you. For those that we've lived life together, you know, Brother Humes, uh, who's, you know, was teaching at um, Huffman High School, and we brought in the Brooks Brothers, and we started working with mm -hmm. kids. We're grateful for all of you that have served for the more than, you know, uh, 80,000 volunteers that we've had. We thank God for you. We could not have done it without you. The good news is the best is yet to come. Yes. To our families that have supported us. Thank you so, so much. We could not have done it without you. Tuesday night, a little different, but gratitude goes a long way. The best is yet to come. God bless you. God keep you. And if you get a chance, look at cityservealabama.org, cityservealabama.org, or look us up on Facebook, City Serve Alabama. The church is still moving forward. And Covenant Community Fellowship. To learn more about us, visit us online at mycovenantcommunity.org. That's mycovenantcommunity.org. We are changing the world with the gospel and love of Jesus Christ. God bless you. God keep you. Have a great night, you all. Hey, thanks for tuning in, family. We love you guys. Have a great night.